We're beginning a new series this morning for the next three weeks, and I've entitled it Taking Control of Your Life. You can live your life by design, or you can live it by default. You can see what comes up, and you can see what happens, or you can determine, I am taking control under God of my life, and I'm steering it into the purposes of God, into the things of God, and I'm not going to live at the level I did. As I introduced today's message, look with me here at John chapter 9 and verse 1. The scripture says, walking down the street, Jesus saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, causing him to be born blind? The Message Bible says, Jesus said, you are asking the wrong question. You are looking for someone to blame. There's no such cause effect here. Look instead for what God can do. Why don't you underline the words look instead? We need to train ourselves to look instead at solutions instead of who's responsible. I want to speak to you this morning on giving up the blame game. Giving up the blame game. So number one, the first reason to give up on the blame game is this. It's a sign of a lack of maturity and accountability. It's not a mature thing to do to blame others. You watch children play and you'll see they always blame each other when things go wrong. Mature people take responsibility. I'm responsible for who I am, for where I'm going. We tend to like to make ourselves the hero and other people the villain. But that's immature. Number two, the second reason for giving up on the blame game is it always gets us off, but it never gets us ahead. You'll get off the hook, but you'll never get ahead in life if you blame people. And every time you get off being responsible for something, you make yourself the victim instead of making yourself the victor. And it's so easy to slip into that. I was reading about a man in America in the 1970s His name is Dan White, and uh, in San Francisco, he walked into the mayor's office, and he shot the mayor, uh, George Moscone, and another associate, Harvey Milk, shot them to death right there in the office. And when he went to trial, his attorneys presented to the judges that this man was not accountable for murder. He was accountable for manslaughter. They said that he was addicted to junk food. And because he was addicted to junk food, particularly Twinkies, this is what drove him to commit this crime. You're laughing. They let him off the murder charge, and they put him in prison on manslaughter charges. He served a sentence, and he got out. You see, he got off. But when he came out, he couldn't live with himself, so he committed suicide. You see, you can get off, but you won't get ahead. And when you blame people, you're finding an excuse, but you still have to face who you are ultimately. And who you are is something we've got to deal with. We've got to take control, bring ourselves to the Lord and say, this is my life. This is where I need to change. This is where I need to grow. I'm not going to blame people anymore. Number three, the third reason we need to give up on the blame game. Are you being helped this morning? Is it gives false reasons and solves nothing. Blaming gives false reasons for our problems and it doesn't solve anything. Margaret Wheatley is a management consultant and is used extensively with corporations. She said this, she said, as soon as we find someone to blame, we act as though we've solved the problem. Isn't that true? Who's responsible? Him. Okay. But we haven't got anywhere near us solving the problem. We've only got close to apportioning the blame. In South Africa, if I have to be honest, we're very good at blaming one another pointing fingers at different groups of people all across the nation, political and non-political, for why we're having problems, but we have very little solutions coming forth. We mustn't be part of that problem. We must be people who say, we recognize that. We're not going to be finger pointers. We're going to be solution finders. The fourth reason we need to give up on the blame game is it leads to an unhappy life. When you stop blaming people, you will become a happy person. Do you know what causes unhappiness? Is you feel a victim. You feel overpowered. Life's too big. 
these corporations, Wall Street, the stock exchange, big business, unions, the government, the weather. No, 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 nothing is too big for God. Christ in me, the hope of glory. I'll take control of my life. I will not be a victim, I will be a victor. The fifth reason today that we need to stop the blame game is it damages relationships and it gives others power over us. It gives others power over us. If you want to build good relationships with people, don't blame them all the time because when you blame someone, they don't say, oh, yes, you're right. It is my fault. They perceive it as an attack on their person, don't they? And so if you want to build relationships with with your wife, your teachers, your boss, people you're trying to influence as a Christian, don't blame them. It doesn't build relationships. It alienates people because they perceive you as attacking them. You know what you do when you keep blaming people? They cover up. That's what Adam and Eve did. They covered up and hid and tried to apportion the blame. But God looked for them and he covered them. And so when you don't cover yourself, God covers you. When you stand up and own up, God will cover you. Number six, as we come to a close. Have you been helped today? The sixth reason why we need to stop playing the blame game is it destroys our leadership potential. Every Christian is meant to be a leader in society, not a follower. We're meant to influence others. And if you want to be a leader in your church, a leader in society, a leader in your company, a leader in business, you must be a person who doesn't blame others. Leaders say, hang on a minute, even though I'm far removed maybe, I'm the top of the pyramid, I'm, I'm, I'm far removed from people on the ground who are supposed to be doing this job. If people steal money from a company and you're the CEO, guess what? You're responsible. And if you take responsibility, people respect you and they follow you even if you're wrong. Thank you.